Yo, what's up Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at again with another New York Giants update video. And we avoided a scare. I'm just going to get right into it, guys. First and foremost, we avoided a scare. So for those of you that don't know, at yesterday's Giants practice Thursday, Shane Lemieux was carted off with what appeared to be, first they thought an elbow injury, but then it turned out a knee injury. In addition to Shane Lemieux, our right tackle Matt Peart had a strained back coming into training camp. Um, there's not really too much of an update how that strained back is going, but he was mentioned as well in the entire Shane Lemieux thing, so I'm assuming maybe he's still working through that pain. Um, but at the very least, one if not two of our starting offensive linemen, and the most important starting offensive lineman in my opinion coming up this year, the left guard, Shane Lemieux, has been injured. And well... We all know the Giants struggle with old lines, don't we? Real quick, shout out to everybody watching the video right now. You supporters are the reason this channel uh, grows, the reason the channel even exists. And uh, I truly appreciate the fact that you guys watch, comment, like the videos and all that. Um, but Shane Lemieux, of course, I've been saying all offseason that this Giants coaching staff has tremendous faith and trust in this old line for them, you know, to essentially not really address it that much this offseason. They're rolling forward with the guys from last year. You know what I mean? They have faith in Shane Lemieux. They got faith that Will Hernandez could uh, bounce back, I guess. They got faith that Matt Peart could be the right tackle of the future. They were in a draft that was pretty good at the guard position. Um, they passed on a couple guards in the third round when they took Aaron Robinson. A pick that at first I was confused by because of the fact that I was like, we have a good amount of corners already and there was a couple guards on the board. Maybe the Giants didn't like them, but you know, there was a guy like, for example, in Ben Cleveland that was still on the board who seemed like he was going to be a monster. Of course, remains yet to be seen. Hasn't played a snap in the NFL game yet, I will say that. But there were, there were guards on the board that potentially would have been good picks at that third round selection, right? But the Giants really didn't address the inside offensive line position that much this offseason we did sign jonathan harrison a backup center from the jets and zach fulton a veteran guard from the texans uh they're guys i view as as backups and rotational players not necessarily starters right not necessarily in a situation like this where if shane lemieux this becomes a more serious thing i'm comfortable with them starting for an extended period of time but the Giants did get them, I guess. And they also had a, a veteran in Kenny Wiggins out there yesterday as well, working out with the team. We'll see how that goes. But we we all have a little bit of relief here because it doesn't seem like it's too serious of an injury, according to Jordan Renan, of, of course. Um, but to be honest with you guys, he still has for evaluation to go. I'll just read you the tweet. It's this is from Jordan Ron on Twitter. He says, worst case seems to have been avoided on the Shane Lemieux knee injury per source. Sigh relief for Giants on their offensive line. He will undergo further evaluation over the next few days, but it's not believed to be season ending. Now, I'm not sure exactly why um, he must have a really good source or a really good outlook on this injury for him to say before, you know, tests are run on it, that it's not going to be season ending, which is very optimistic and also very positive if true. So we'll see where it goes. I'm still going to wait. You know, I'm still personally holding my breath with this offensive line because once again, the Giants coaching staff has faith in it. And I've been saying they need to show me where this faith is coming from. They need to show me either through performance or through training camp. You know what I'm saying? Through the reports we're getting from the beat reporters that, yeah, we can trust this offensive line. So far, not off to a good start because of injuries, basically, right? Once again, we got to wait for, for evaluation, for testing to see what's gonna happen um but joe judge as well did say the worst case has been avoided so hopefully shane lee Mew is gonna be back in maybe uh, um a month is a month too long i'm not sure how long a non-serious knee injury is gonna take for him to recover right if a serious one would knock you out for the season i'm assuming he's gonna take a couple weeks if he doesn't great i guess great uh but we don't necessarily have a guy that could be a long-term starter if shane is going to be gone for an extended period of time i'm comfortable with zach fulton for like one or two games 
you know what i'm saying that's how your backup i feel like at any position should be they should be able to give you one to two maybe three good games you know from their skill set not a whole season you know what i'm saying or not half a season even but hopefully shane lemieux is fine hopefully he recovers fine and all that and, and we'll just get right back to work with his giants o line um because as of right now there's a couple questions i feel like the only two sh two share i can't even speak two sure things on our line are the center and nick gates who had a really good year last year and i think you know he could only improve from there because it was his first year at that position you know what i'm saying nick gates was our most consistent offensive lineman last year and our right all uh, right our left tackle andrew thomas i keep thinking about matt Pert, but our left tackle andrew thomas i have faith in as well but you guys already know why i'm a big andrew thomas fan i made a whole video as to why there's a complete misconception about his rookie year that he had a bad rookie year when in the reality is he was playing on one ankle because one of his ankles was injured the entire year and he went through essentially three coaching changes at the offensive line it's not easy to have a good consistent rookie year with you know with an injury and with coaching changes and in addition to that he was going up against the, some of the toughest defensive lines in the league last year you know the Giants schedule had guys like tj watt miles garrett on it um there was a stretch where we go we were going up against like i a couple of like top 10 defenses in the league it was crazy right i, and I think thomas healthy and you know what i'm saying with a full off season now not a shortened one like last year and with what is supposed to be a stable offensive line coach and coaching staff he's gonna take a step forward and i hope that's extended essentially to the entire group as a whole because the worst case scenario would be for this line not to work out this year and we're back to the drawing board for like the fifth time in seven years or something like that giants online has been good for a long time it's about time they figured it out it's about time you know we give these guys some time to get chemistry and gel together and see if they develop but worst case scenario would be come october november you know we find out that this line isn't it and we probably should have taken another person in the draft that's what you want to avoid at all costs i don't think it's going to happen simply because of how much faith joe judge and the coaches having them and i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of bank on that faith and then real quick another thing that happened yesterday was that the giants signed vet running back alfred morris now of course some of you might be asking i thought he was already on the team that is true he was with us last year um i was of the same thing i'm guessing you know it was just a one-year deal last year they brought him back in yesterday and, and then they signed him again i don't mind it at all man Alfred Morris did a great job for us in that Seahawks game where, where it was him and Colt McCoy, you know, on the offensive end that did the job for us and got the job done and we upset the Seahawks. And Alfred Morris knows the system for sure. Out of all the running backs we brought in this year, you know, in terms of free agents, he's the only one that has actual experience with the team, with the culture, with, you know, the players, the coaching staff, and with what scheme Jason Garrett is going to be running. And I mean, he's been with jason garrett when he was in in dallas as well so i like it you know what i'm saying and morris is a vet as well it's not like you ever hear anything bad about the guy i'm all for it man i'd love to see another baseball home run celebration out of all alfred morris in 2021 that would be nice i don't know i just i just like it a lot uh but that's basically what happened yesterday guys and i will a little bit of today as well with the uh extra shane let me news but push your thoughts down below let me know what you guys think um offensive line What's your outlook on it? How do you feel about it? Do you? I know Giants fans, a couple Giants fans want us to immediately go and target one of those bigger names like David DeCastro out there. I personally am not sure how I feel about that because a guy like him specifically is a little too old and hasn't, you know, that's another video for another day. We'll see what happens. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. And I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.